Well, hi, I'm Larry Chahachek. I'm a professor of soil science at uh, NDSU in Fargo. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the effects of removing uh, corn residue from fields. Uh, this is a topic that's uh, been around for a little while. Uh, there's been interest in removing the residue uh, as a source of biofuel feedstock. But in recent years, there's been a lot of residue removed also for livestock feeding purposes. A lot of times it's used uh, along with feeding um, uh, distillers grains to create some bulk and roughage in, 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 in with the feeders grains to reduce the energy in livestock feeds. But the concern here has been that if we start removing uh, the residue, we're removing some of the fertility uh, and reducing the potential for, for yield. Um, in this study here at Oaks, there's been, this has been going on since 2009. The interesting thing about the Oaks site is that it's a sandy site. There are a number of studies that have been carried on around the country, probably the two closest have been in South Dakota and uh, Western Minnesota. Uh, those are on, on loamy or clay sites. Sandy sites have a problem, uh, a greater problem with wind erosion than the other sites do. So it is sort of a fragile site and that's what makes it interesting. It also has some interesting things to do with uh, retaining water. Sands do not retain as much water as, as some of the clayier soils do. So water has to be sort of uh, applied throughout the season. This is an irrigated site. Water has to be applied throughout the season to maintain enough water for the corn to grow. The first pictures I've got here, a couple of pictures showing what it looks like to remove no residue. That'd be 0% uh, residue removal. And you can see that sort of in the center of that photo. And then on the, on, on the right hand side is 100% removal. Again, you can see an area in the center of the photo. There are some other treatments in there. This study's got four treatments, 0%, 33%, 67%, and 100% removal. So all of the residues left on the 0% and all the residues removed, except, except what the, the, the stumps and the uh, root systems are left in the soil from, from season to season. There's two different management systems. There's a continuous corn system, and there is a corn-soybean rotation system. Now within the corn-soybean rotation, uh, there's two parts of that. There's uh, corn one year, soybean the next year, or soybean the first year and corn the next year. So both, both parts of that rotation are present. If we look at yields corn after corn, uh, there really are not uh, any significant differences, uh, either looking at the latest uh, that we've got published, and that's 2017, or uh, the long term, the 2009 to 2017. Uh, sometimes we see a little bit higher uh, yield for the 100% uh, removal, but uh, they vary uh, from treatment to treatment. And, and perhaps these, this tendency to the higher yield is a, an effect of warmer soil temperatures uh, in the spring as the crop is planted. These are all no-till, so there would be no residue cooling the surface and just a little bit of an edge and growth may help give us uh, a little bit more yield in both the continuous corn yields and in the corn in the corn and soybean rotation yields. There are differences. The corn and soybean rotation yields have a little bit higher uh, overall yield, uh, but essentially the fertility uh, has been the same. It's about a 226 pounds of nitrogen applied to each of these, at least in the recent years. So, there doesn't seem to be much difference between whether we leave the residue on or remove it all or uh, leave part of it there, remove part of it. In 2013, uh, we did some work on the physical properties. That's something that's not been looked at, but in the unique soils that we have, the sandy soils, we know they don't retain a lot of water. They also, uh, because the sand do not aggregate very well because of lack of clay particles, and if you remove organic matter, you might also be removing uh, the glue that binds the soil particles together. Um, so we did a number of different things. Uh, one, we looked at the infiltration rate, used single ring infiltrometers, and measured the differences in rates of water infiltration over a period of time. 
and and in the corn after corn, uh, the zero percent rate had about uh, two and a half times greater infiltration rate, about 22 millimeters per minute, versus the uh, uh, the hundred percent had nine millimeters per minute. So it was essentially about an inch per minute versus about a third of an inch per minute. So there's about a two-thirds reduction because we took off the residue. And part of this was due, interestingly, to the fact that we found as we were putting our, our rings in and then taking them out, there were many, many more earthworms in the, uh, in the zero percent removal. And there are very few in the 100 percent removal. Part of this is that, that earthworms feel, feed on the surface of the soil of, on any organic matters up there. So zero percent actually had a lot of macropores which allowed the water to move through much, much quicker uh, much more faster than the 100% uh, uh, removal. So that was an interesting observation we made. Um, in, in the box plots here sort of show the differences between treatments. Again, the, the, uh, in continuous corn, the infiltration was the highest in no resident removal. We also looked at a couple other things. Um, one of them was look at the wind erodible fraction. Again, if you don't have a cover protecting the surface, as well as leaving organic matter there to help bind the soil particles together, you can have wind erosion on these soils, uh, even, even under, under no-till. And the, the, what we found was that the 100% uh, wind erosionable fraction was, uh, uh, the 100% the removal had about 40% of the aggregates were of the size that can be eroded by inches, which is uh, by, by, uh, by wind. It's about 0.84 millimeters, uh, which is you know, about the size of a sand grain or the, the square of a, a, uh, in, in a regular window screen, about the opening in a window screen is about the size of the particle that can move. Anything uh, that size or smaller can move if it's not cemented together. The, the lowest, uh, Wind erodible fraction was found in the 0% removal or where all the residue was left on the surface. Um, and that was 35% uh, of the aggregates there were uh, able to blow away. We also looked at um, the aggregate stability. Again, this is sort of a measure of the glue, how, how well the soil particles are glued together, which is also related to organic matter. And we found that uh, the uh, uh, the uh, water stable aggregates uh, were about 58%. Uh, uh, they would not disperse in water in the no residue removal, and about 48%, about 10% uh, less in the water stable aggregates in the 100% removal. So again, there's this, this effect of removing the, uh, the, 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 the biomass uh, can affect the organic matter. Now remember, this was nearly over five years ago, so it may be greater now, uh, but we haven't had a chance to look at that again. Now in the, in the, uh, in the corn soybean rotations, we've got corn one year, soybean the next. So we looked at both phases. And the only things we saw in the physical properties was the infiltration rate um, on the 0% removals was 17 millimeters per second, a little bit slower than for continuous corn. And the 100% removal was about 11 millimeters per second, a little bit faster. Now remember, there is some residue that's left after the soybean crop. The soybean crop's not removed. So you have some residue there that helps protect the surface and also provide some organic matter to help bind soil particles together. Um, the other thing we found that the wind erodible fraction again was higher in the 100% in the, uh, removal. The wind erodible, about 47% of the aggregates were in the wind erodible size for uh, the 100 percent removal and about only about 35 percent in the uh, zero percent removal. We also looked at the plots that were in soybean and the only thing we found was there was a little bit of difference 
in the um, dry aggregate stability. There's two ways you can look at aggregates. You can take aggregates, uh, keep them in a moist state just as they come out of the field, and, and, and using a, uh, a sieving method, determine how stable the aggregates are, or you can dry them, air dry them, that you might find after a, uh, uh, you know, after the, the, the soil has dried out. The, the, we, we usually know that the wet stable aggregates uh, are not going to be affected by rainfall as much uh, by uh, being broken up, but the dry aggregates a lot of times do have a little bit of a problem because a raindrop hitting it will cause them to blow apart. And, and uh, the, the water stable aggregates for the zero per, or the air dry water stable aggregates for the uh, uh, zero percent removal on the, under the soybean crop was about 87 percent of them were stable and with the 100 percent removal was 80 percent so it's a very small difference but just slightly uh, more uh, or, or slightly less water stable aggregates so uh, we, there's a lot of interesting things in this this site here Overall, if we would look at, uh, you know, does uh, removal affect our yields? A lot of the studies have not shown that, but uh, remember that when we take the residue off the surface, we still have probably close to half the corn plant uh, underground. And so there is some organic matter that's being returned. Uh, I think most of uh, the studies that are out there in this part of the world, in the plain, Great Plains or the Eastern Plains, Western Corn Belt, is that we need to leave about three and a half tons of residue on the surface to maintain organic carbon. We've looked at organic carbon but uh, in, in 2013, but uh, this area has been disturbed. There were some uh, drip lines that had been installed so there's a lot of variability in organic carbon and we couldn't really separate any components out of there that, that would look like one treatment or other had uh, better organic matter in it. Um, as far as nutrient offtake, um, uh, Kelly and the crew have been, been doing some estimations on it. There is some phosphorus and potassium taken off, but a lot of times in the corn residue, there's not a lot of nutrients left. It's just a lot of the more lignified material, uh, mostly organic material. Not a lot of nitrogen. Most of the corn runs around a CN ratio of 60 to 70 to 1, so there's not a lot of nitrogen in there. So there's not a lot of nutrients, but there's a lot of carbon being taken off. Um, still, still a lot we need to learn about this, but, but uh, I, I think particularly the physical properties are something that's been really interesting looking at in this. Uh, particular study. So um, I guess this is still a to be continued uh, story.